Hey, it's Mike here, and today, it appears that vegans have finally figured out how to force other people to eat a vegan diet because we have a new tube feeding study that gave patients a fully plant-based tube feeding regimen, and the results are quite astounding in the sense that they're showing the exact opposite of what a lot of these vegan stereotype negative health aspects are. They have data on all sorts of digestive aspects from constipation to bloating to flatulence, discomfort, etc. And it was interesting because they even threw in some strength metrics, which I wouldn't really think to do just feeding people a different tube diet, but they did. And of course I am joking, these aren't people that are forced to be vegan. We'll get into the details in a bit and we're gonna keep this one relatively short, so let's just go. First I'll just say I am in Greece, which is why it looks different. I am a little bit windswept. Maybe I got a little bit too much sun. I just got off a boat, but here I am and the trip has been amazing so far. And I'm gonna to try to get a vlog out soon to show you all the amazing things that we ate and more. But let's look to this study from Frontiers in Nutrition published in September 2025. And the title is maybe a little bit longer than it needs to be. A multi-center perspective, single arm, open label, 13 month intervention study of a plant-based high energy and protein enteral tube feed in home enterly tube fed patients. That was a mouthful, which is what they got through a tube. Uh, people were either exclusively or almost entirely fed this plant-based, fully plant-based, they even mentioned the word vegan in the study, diet. Some people had higher or lower percentages of tube feeding, but the non-tube feeding aspect of their diet was also plant-based. And it was really interesting because this was a super well-planned plant-based diet as well. They went through and made sure they had all of the minerals, nutrients, vitamins, et cetera, and even added some extra protein because they claimed that people who had diseases, which there are various diseases here, which you can pause to read or conditions, they require higher protein. No, that's the belief of the people that wrote the study, which is why they added protein. Interestingly, that was like a 50-50 pea to soy protein ratio that they gave them. I don't know why they chose to do that. They also did an interesting thing where they had an added fiber group and a group without added fiber. And so we had a total of 25 patients without the added fiber and 15 patients with the added fiber. The portion were already vegetarian slash vegan put into one group, but that was only eight out of 40 people. So this was mostly non-vegans going on a vegan diet. And then we had some people that were lactose intolerant, some people that did it for environmental reasons, and even people that were put on it because it was just believed to be a better mix for them. And they measured various metrics at baseline as well as 28 days, six months, and 13 months. All right, now let's get to the results, why not? And we have a pretty interesting chart here. A little bit hard to read, but we're looking at the actual digestive symptom score where we're looking at the percentage reporting an absence of symptoms. So the higher it is, the better that they're feeling, which is confusing. And on there, we have various shapes that include diarrhea, constipation, nausea, vomiting, abdominal discomfort, bloating, flatulence, etc. And we can see a statistically significant improvement in these overall symptoms at 28 days compared to baseline. And that's probably the biggest limitation of the study. It is not a randomized control trial where you're gonna take people, put them on an intervention, or put them on a control and compare it. We're just comparing the results to the past or the beginning, but it's still really fascinating and useful. And then we have these gastrointestinal symptoms going out to 13 months, and we can see all of the bars are statistically significantly different from baseline. It teeters a little bit, but overall, quite a bit better. And so why is this important? Because we've seen a lot of claims, maybe just to try and poo-poo a vegan diet, no pun intended, that you're gonna get a bunch of flatulence going on a vegan diet, you know, that by consuming more plants, you're going to be just like farting way too much and it's gonna ruin your life. <laughs> well, and that's generally just an anecdotal claim. We do have other studies I've covered in the past, but we are seeing here a pretty dramatic decrease in flatulence, you know, just in that first 28 days, which would be the point where you'd expect people to have more. It's enough to report it as a symptom it actually dropped, just flipping the graph upside down, from 60% of people having that symptom to 40%, so that's pretty great. And then we have that issue of bloating, which I've seen people put out there as a reason they were quitting or whatever, and who knows what's going on in people's lives. But we have another interesting, also very complicated chart here that breaks it down in terms of severity from mild, moderate to severe or none, where a larger blue bar is more absence of symptoms. And we can see a significant drop there, which is great. And we also saw it for burping. Also interesting because they were given added protein. People sometimes complain of burping from that. So yet it looked better. And then we also have one that we can come to expect a little bit, and that is constipation as the chart shows here. And it did it over 
over the four different time periods and we can see, you know, more blue line, the better off. And really that severity, people with severe constipation actually went to zero, which is pretty incredible. And then again, we have a flatulence chart, which showed an increase at least at 28 days and 13 months. So we're seeing an increase in the absence of symptoms there that are complained about. And it was just at 28 days and 13 months, but still pretty solid. Or should I say less gaseous? Now let's talk about other aspects. Were people just shriveling away and getting really weak from eating plant-based foods? Well, no. We can see that things like hand grip strength was maintained and get this, they tested how much people could do a 30 second chair standing test. And they found in terms of repetitions of that, that they were able to do two more repetitions after being fed this plant-based diet. And this is where I was like, all right, I'm gonna put my skeptical carnivore dieter hat on and think what might be wrong with this study. One thing could be that there are people with conditions that would just improve anyway, so maybe they are gonna be more mobile over time. But if you actually look at the conditions here, we have ones that generally are not expected to go in that direction, if anything, the other direction. So as the researchers say, quote, this longitudinal study highlights that a plant-based, vegan, suitable, high energy, high protein, enteral tube feed has good tolerance in these patients, positive long-term effects on protein intake and potential benefits on physical function. We're talking potential benefits. And they really did the study to try and figure out, hey, if people need this type of feed, <laughs> we're just saying this type of food being fed to them through tube, will they be okay? Is this safe? What's gonna happen? And they also concluded at the end that there were no major safety concerns relating to the plant-based intervention feed reported during the study. And they also go further and say that the compliance to this diet was actually really high. And this makes sense because a lot of the reason that people refuse to give up animal products is because they have some type of sensory, cultural, whatever attachment to the experience of eating that food. So in this case, if they're feeling better in various ways on this, they're gonna be like, of course I wanna keep eating this. And that's fully separated from the sort of emotional attachment to food, which I think is what makes this study super interesting and more objective in that sense. That is where we can get a little bit of a gray area in the study in that some of these people were already vegan and there were improvements, but we still have a lot of people that were not, so I'd love to see another study where they, first of all, have a control group, and second of all, have people that are all not vegan before it, and then see what changes we have, but we're still seeing signals here that are positive. So now we have the question of who was this study funded by? It appears that this is a company called Nutritia out of Prague, Czechia, Czech Republic, and they are not a strictly vegan company, but they do supply these vegan-friendly meals through tubes. And so we have a bit of a bias here, but it's not like a ideological vegan bias that people might be more triggered by. But they have a flavor, for example, that contains beef. So I really do not see this as anything beyond them just like trying to push a product. You could argue that that would still lead to bias, no, but take it as you will. Anyway, in the end here, we have a pretty surprising result here, even to me that there would be no increase in flatulence and in fact, a decrease in flatulence. All right, but in the end here, I think this is fascinating because you have just a different way of eating here. It's just like inserted automatically into your body essentially. And so you get to remove, at least largely depending on the percentage of food that was eaten this way, a interesting, very subjective human experience aspect to eating. And again, that has emotional, cultural, et cetera, ties that can influence the study. But the main results here, less flatulence, less constipation, less abdominal issues overall. And then in terms of the physical aspect, seeing the maintenance of hand grip strength, because there's of course no strength intervention here, but then somehow we are seeing people be able to move better, which is quite fascinating. Some of these benefits could have been from people who are vegetarian being put on a vegan diet, that's a possibility, or the non-vegans being put on that vegan diet. We don't really know, we need another study for that, but again, positive results all around. So let me know down below what you think of this study. Are you gonna now be just <laughs> eating through a tube? Okay, maybe maybe that was a distasteful joke and that was not meant to be a taste related pun anyway. So keep an eye out for my grease trip video. We ate so much delicious food that you should see. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.